Book of Psalms. Psalm 119. Some of you remember when we tried to memorize Psalm 119. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we each had sections. Well, each section is eight verses. Yeah. You know. But again, I would encourage you. This is powerful stuff in Psalm 119. We're going to be looking at verses 97 to 104. So once you've found your place, let's all stand for the reading of the Word of God, Psalm 119, 97 to 104. And the Word of God says, Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Thou through thy commandments hast made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients, because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Verse 102, I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. Holy Father, Lord, again I pray, Lord, let me be this morning what I am supposed to be in your service. Lord, I am just an under-shepherd to the chief shepherd. Lord, and... My heart's desire is to fulfill your will, Lord, so that these, your lambs, receive through me, Lord, what you have provided for them this morning. Glorify yourself in all things, we pray and ask in Christ's name. Amen. You can be seated. You'll note there the psalmist states in these verses, Thou, the Lord God, hath made me to, made me wiser than my enemies, to have more understanding than all my teachers, and to have more understanding than the ancients. Well, how was this accomplished? There in that psalm in those verses we read by loving, meditating on, the keeping of, not departing from, being taught by, and esteeming as sweet the Lord's laws, commandments, testimonies, precepts, words, judgments, in other words, the Holy Scriptures, the Bible. Nobody is born with the knowledge of those six things. Simple fact. Go with me to Romans chapter 1, picking it up at verse 18. Now man is born with some things. Romans 1, 18 to 20. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the earth are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Man is born with a natural inclination towards God. The very nature of man in him is to seek 
to be united with his creator and to fulfill his purpose for existence. You have to be taught to be an atheist. Every little child knows there's a God and has a desire towards God. I remember my own childhood having that desire and thirst for God. Unfortunately, it was being filled by lies of the Church of Rome. But I wasn't satisfied with it like somebody else will talk about momentarily. You know, but without intelligent direction, man cannot know all that God would have him to know. Even if man responds via his conscience to the very basic light of the creation that's all around us, he could never come to the full realization of God just with that. Second Corinthians chapter 4. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians 4. We want to look at verses 3 and 4. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world, little g, meaning Satan, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. How the devil goes after any particular individual is going to be dependent upon what level of light they have been exposed to. For example, Eve. Okay? Eve knew God personally. She received instruction as to what God had commanded. Therefore, Satan's attack against her had to be tailored to the light she'd been exposed to. And what was his attack? He caused her to question God's motives. And he wasn't going to cause her to question the existence of God. She knew God. She walked with God in the garden right along with her husband Adam. He wasn't going to be able to convince her to believe in a false God. She knew God. He deceived her by causing her to question the motives and the sincerity of her creator. Okay, Taylor is a death. Jump ahead, 1945, the island of New Guinea. I've told you this story many times, but it's a perfect illustration of the point that I'm making here for you. Okay, this native man in New Guinea in the area of Wewak, which at that time was Still pretty much all bush. Uh, prior to World War II, this man had had no contact, no influence with anything of the 20th century world whatsoever. This is his own testimony. He knew there was a divine creator. He knew that this creator controlled life and death. What he did not know and what he could not know from the witness of nature itself, the creation itself around him was, who is that creator and does he care about me? And that's what this man would do of a night when it burdened his heart as he'd find the highest tree he could and climb to the top of it and look out at the vastness of that universe and cry out to this unknown God and say, do you care about me? I mean, now, Satan had it easy with these people. I mean, having been able to suppress the knowledge of the one true God for millennia, uh, the devil had these people worshiping false deities, animals. You know, Romans 
one, 22 through 25 tells us about that. It also included ritualistic cannibalism. This man had eaten parts of the bodies of his enemies. See, but he wasn't satisfied with the explanations that he was being given. And he sought more light. And God responded to that man's life. And when the missionary, the man who had been, he had been part of the United States Army Air Corps, had been stationed there in World War II. This man started, the, the, the man from New Guinea starts having contact with these people. This man is there, his heart is American gets burdened about it. God sends him back and he meets with this man and he meets with the people in their village. And they begin to be exposed to more and more supernatural light. Until a very great many of them <coughs> trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior, including this <coughs> man. Now, simply put, Man requires supernatural revelation in order to gain the knowledge he needs in relation to God, in order to make an intelligent decision regarding God. Now, there's only two sources of supernatural revelation, one which comes from God and one which comes from Satan. Is a supernatural being. Therefore, the great question, of course, has always been how to be able to tell the difference, tell the one from the other. Now, in the beginning, the scripture says Adam walked personally with God. He knew God, he knew who God is. He couldn't be deceived in that, same as this might be. He couldn't be deceived in that. How did Adam fall? Adam fell through the wasn't through the deception uh, uh, of getting him to believe in a false god, the deception of getting him to now, how did Adam fall? What was the subtlety that Satan used? He put him in the position of having to make an exchange extremely hard choice. He deceived his wife Eve, she sinned, and now Adam had to choose between God and Eve. That was very, he's very careful and thoughtful about what he does, and he knows what light you've been exposed to and how to take advantage of it. Yeah, but Adam knew God. Adam knew what he had said. You know, and the thing is, Adam was able to pass that down. Adam lived 930 years. Lamech, the son of Methuselah, who, you know, Lamech is Noah's father. Lamech was 24 years old. Adam died. Think about that. Lamech would have known all eight generations that preceded him and would have had direct testimony of these men as well as the direct testimony of God, which then, of course, he passed on to his son, Noah. Noah would have known Seth. <coughs> Adam had already died, but he would have known Seth. Adam's third son. Yeah. The previous nine generations of patriarchs died before the flood came, leaving their knowledge and their experiences with Noah. Okay? But Noah was spoken directly to by God. He had primary and he had secondary sources of information. 
And his primary source was impeccable. God himself. Then you take what God said in a multitude of the secondary sources of information that he had and could compare them with the primary source. Noah was the tenth from Adam. And he had a direct line of witness from Adam to himself that was unbroken. Now it's unknown whether or not God's words had been written down at this point or only had just been passed along through verbal communication through the generations. A book of Enoch Okay, apocryphal book, completely spurious. Disregard it. You know, chronologically, first book written that we have in the scriptures is the book of Job. Now, the time frame for Job would be around 1780, uh, making Job contemporary with Abraham in his later life, contemporary with Isaac. Now, Abraham comes along, he's the 11th generation, or not the 11th generation, he is 11 generations after Noah. Okay? About a period of 430 years there. And like I said, whether there was writing or not before the flood, we know of a certainty because we have the book of Job that there was certainly writing at that time. I mean, could there have been? I don't know. I mean, they had a system of measures, cubits. You know, I mean, they had. May have been. Don't know. Not the point. The thing is, the knowledge of God and His words, as well as His required means of approaching unto Him for righteousness, were well known. That there was private interpretation <laughs> of those words well that's evident no question about that the fact of God's words being preserved and available though cannot be denied it was possible at this point in time to certainly know the difference between God's words and Satan's words. God had seen to that. And along with the secondary sources, the Lord again gives direct verbal testimony to Job. He gives it to Abraham. He is their primary source. You know, with the secondary sources either supporting or being refuted by the primary source. Now men fall into Satan's trap when they reject both the primary source as well as the supporting secondary sources in favor of their personal preferences. Okay. Cain, the earliest example of that right there. Well, for that matter, Eve. Personal I mean, Eve, I mean, why did she accept Satan's deception? I mean, in light of her first hand knowledge and experience, why'd she bite on that book? What attracted Eve was the potential to be like God. I don't want to be like God is not necessarily a bad thing. What's the motive behind it is what's at issue. What was Satan's self-willed proclamation? I shall be like the Most High over in Isaiah 14. His motive was to be worshipped like God, worshipped as God. He's negative motive is exposed by the fact that he, she accepted Satan's premise about God in spite of her first-hand primary source experience. It 
Yeah, and that's so much of what happens <laughs> today. You know, she believes God was lying to her and to Adam. Why? You know, why lying to them about why they were being banned from eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Well, why would God have lied to them about that? What in her experience would cause her to believe God? No, it was a matter of, it doesn't matter what God has said. My personal preference, I like what's being offered here. And this is the kind of self-willed, self-serving mentality that has corrupted the majority of men's thinking in relation now, how they approach the search for spiritual truth. If it don't line up with what I like, I'm going to reject it. I think the sky is orange. And until I find a source that supports what I believe, I'm going to reject everything else that there. If I don't like what I'm receiving from God's Word, I'm going to negate it. I'm going to negate it by claiming they mean something other than what they say. I mean, this is done by only partially quoting, taking out of context, not comparing Scripture with Scripture. Now, God does not audibly speak to men today. Say it again. God does not audibly speak to men today. With the close of scriptural canon, with the book of the revelation of Jesus Christ given to John on the island of Patmos, mankind received the complete revelation of God to man. And it is to be our primary source and final authority. By claiming that there are multiple versions out there of God's words extent and that only the specially trained you know, are able to give us the correct sense of God's words then those specially trained become the final authority and not the word of God I mean some versions out there were actually deliberately created by men in order to support their preferences and private interpretations because they couldn't do it out of the Word of God. Yeah. New Age version, Jehovah's Witness, for example. Okay. They do it by advertising secondary sources as being clarifying documents for the primary source, the Scriptures or those secondary sources as being superior to and superseding the Bible. I mean, there's a plethora of that kind of stuff out there. I mean, the writings of the early church fathers, the Watchtower, I mentioned Jehovah's Witness, uh, Crazy Joe Smith's three books that he put out uh, there, the Papal Bulls, and speaking ex cathedra you know, proclamations and, and, and catechisms and so on all these things all you know supersede and are superior to the word of God I mean even some commentaries and notes that you'll find in certain uh, printings of Bibles out there will contradict the primary source okay also includes those who claim to have been given extra biblical revelation from either God himself or by an angel sent from God. Again, Crazy Joe Smith or Muhammad. A couple of examples for you right there. So again, the question, how do we know biblical truth from Satan's deceptions? Well, first, we must accept the supernatural revelation given by God to men, which is the Holy Bible. God has given and preserved his words for men 
throughout the ages. They are readily available, and they are both clear, and they are easy to understand. There are not multiples which differ the one from the other contradicting one another. This singular primary source okay, is that by which all other sources are to be judged. <coughs> Any secondary source which does not line up with the scriptures is to be rejected at a hand. Period. I don't care what the source is. If it robs any of, in any way, the Godhead's glory, its honor, its deity, its power, its praise, its fear, if it contradicts clear teaching, scripture, if it denies sound doctrine, if it gives honor to the devil or to men, if it glorifies this world, if it advocates for science so-called or for the philosophies of men, okay. in these last days of the Laodicean period, just prior to the Blessed Hope, which is where we are, uh, the amount of available information regarding what is contained in the scriptures is just incredibly vast. Some of it's good. Most of it's garbage. Most of it's just plain, pure rubbish. The problem is that few people, including born-again believers, spend any serious time, if any at all, studying the primary source. If you study the primary source, you know from what you've learned, what you've read, from the witness and testimony of the indwelling Holy Spirit, whether or not a secondary source is legitimate or not. Now, what most people's understanding of God is all based upon secondary sources, personal preferences and opinions, with the secondary sources being those things that support their personal preferences and opinions. You know, and if they even care to have a book that they regard as the Holy Scriptures, they're going to seek one out that has been altered to support their personal preferences and opinions. The vast majority, though, have been duped into believing that, you know, oh, they all say, I don't know how many times, are they all say the same thing? Mm -hmm. Really? Are you giving me that through your first hand personal? primary source experience, or is that just an excuse because I don't want to deal with it? Don't confuse me with the facts. <laughs> don't mess with my personal preferences and opinions and traditions. That's really what it boils down to. You know, they've been believed that, you know, they all say the same thing and that all of them, except one, are clearer and easier to understand, just not that nasty old King James Bible thing. We hate that one. Unify. Right. I mean, most of, uh, most of them rest in, you know, these age-old axioms which you have all heard. You know, well, that's what Mama and Daddy believe. That's good enough for me, right? You know? Well, that's what the pastor said. How many times I've told you, don't believe a word of what I said. Don't you dare. Mm -hmm. 
I'm a man. I can make mistakes. I can be deceived. You better know this book. You know? Well, I just don't agree with that. Well, like, God really cares. <laughs> yeah. You know? It's your interpretation. The scripture has to say about private interpretation. A loving God wouldn't do that. It's written by man. You know? Well, you think you're right and everybody else is wrong. Well, in truth, yeah. It comes to that book. Because yeah. I believe that book. Truth is, lost or saved, you're going to have to give an answer to God. The author of the Bible, who ensured that his words were preserved and available as to why you didn't know him, why they didn't believe him. Yeah, back in Psalm 119, that first verse, 97. Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day, is it? Primary source. Secondary source. Yeah. How do we know? What's your primary source? Secondary sources are only as good as the primary source they're based off of. And you need to have a care. And then there is so much. I can't believe sometimes. You know, and some of it's good. And most of it's just plain junk. And I can't believe the stuff that sometimes that 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 so-called Bible-believing Christians will, will say and put up. It's, it's mind-boggling. Did, you know, like, did you ever read your Bible? Okay. What, are, what, are, what are you basing your statement on? What are the scriptures? Okay. 